All right, uh, welcome everybody. And uh, you are probably watching this update video because I uh, told you so in an annotation or something. So I'm just going to get started and keep this short. Um, in this uh, episode here, request seven, uh, we did almost everything correctly, but afterwards I noticed some issues actually and some things that could have been done better. So at first, let's see uh, what we had and the ending. And it was something like this. And I told, yeah, it's behaving all fine. But actually, if you look closely, I just didn't notice that. They jump around sometimes. They just randomly jump around. So let's get this down to just um, one of them to actually see what's going on. And we'll see that this guy sometimes just jumps to the next waypoint without any uh, apparent reason. He just jumps over there. And I uh, figured this out a little bit and blah, blah, blah and saw that actually the solution to this is in the is waypoint reached method we have to take this as the absolute value so sometimes this path of waypoint dot x minus get x um, is negative this can be negative but we always want it positive so if it's negative we'll just turn it to positive and if it's positive uh, we'll just leave it positive so we can properly compare it uh, to the tolerance that we calculate here also we have to do this on this side here obviously so method absolute oops and just put this in these method absolute parentheses and then we'll see that they don't jump around at all anymore but still there is one thing that could have been uh, done better and that is actually this tolerance variable what I was talking about all the time in the video we don't need it at all because yeah I know that I just broke the code because after we um, improved the actual tolerance calculation here we can just remove it because it behaves best as one this is because speed times gdx dot graphics get delta time returns uh, th this is basically how much the uh, sprite has traveled how uh, big the distance is that it has traveled in one frame and that is just perfect to compare to the current distance so we can see if it's already there and I know that I just broke the code okay this is fine this is fine uh, then it's actually fine so restart this and yeah we'll just see that it perfectly walks over there and changing the speed now is totally uh, okay because sp speed is just one of the two factors so it's always behaving correctly no matter what speed we set even if it's 100 or 1000 it doesn't matter at all okay let's just wait for this guy to reach the point there ah come on come on come on come on and perfectly he actually do decides when to go over there perfectly and not some crappy tolerance that we set them. So um, that's it for the AI sprite. Now just one quick thing for Waypoint tutorial and that's actually um, the user the Kiwi um, noticed that sr.begin and sr.end for the shape renderer in the for loops are actually a pretty uh, weird idea. So here I can just zoom in on that so you can read it. Um, but I am not going to wait for you to read it. <laughs> so thanks to this guy we can uh, improve this for loop thing here. It will look a little bit more complicated but it will improve our performance and we should always improve performance because we always should improve performance. So let's get this out of the for loop and let's remove sr.end and there we go. This is already fine. We always have to um, remove sr.end and sr.begin from the for loop because this way everything that uh, is going to be drawn is some kind of temporary start and uh, like it, it's actually called batching. It's batched on whatever and then flushed to the GPU so it's can, uh, it can be drawn faster which is always more efficient. So let's move this one out of here and this and this and begin and set color get out of there and then we'll just get this oops yeah this actually in a for loop again for AI sprite AI sprite from AI sprites and put this in parentheses and format it a little bit and there we go 
this is fine. Now just this real quick um, for vector2. No, actually this has to go into as well. So for AI sprite AI sprite from AI sprites for vector2 waypoint from AI sprite dot get not get bounding rectangle get path path and that's it so now we draw our stuff more efficient and we can actually rearrange it better so now if we have a look in yeah in what's what's going on we can see that the blue line is just not really visible because we draw the white line over it um, so let's just remove the blue uh, move the blue line after the white line so we draw we draw it after we drew the white line and we can always see it better um, oh now the points are blue why are the points blue oh okay then let's just say we set the color oh well, that's even even better let's just m draw the points then draw the white lines and then draw the blue line. So we, we set the color to white, draw the points, then we draw um, the lines with the same color, and then we set the color to blue to draw the uh, line that yeah represents the current path. So now we can always see everything properly. We have improved speed, we have improved AI, uh, whatever, it's not really AI, improved path following performance, and yeah, it's all fine. So thanks for um, What's well yeah the Kiwi thanks for the uh, the Kiwi's um, yeah improvement here and um, I hope you are not uh, mad at me for messing up the end of this tutorial a little bit but anyway now we improve this uh, I'll put up the code on Bitbucket again and yeah have fun with your pathfinding thanks for watching path following. <laughs>